All right, guys, today we're going to talk about a few um, high priority questions that we're going to see on our DCP in the uh, next week and also just ones that you're going to see on the star test. So I want to talk about the strategies involved in these questions. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take notes on these four questions um, on the left side of your notes in those boxes. And then you're going to use those notes and those strategies um, to answer the, the similar questions on the right side. Okay, so this question is very similar to question number one, so on and so forth. All right, so you're gonna take notes on the left side and then you will answer the questions on the right side. They are different than these questions, okay? All right, so our first question says, Beverly went to the supermarket to purchase some fruit. So it says apples cost $1.88 per pound. It says bananas cost $2.40 per pound. It says oranges cost $1.25 per pound. So it says Beverly bought three pounds of apples. Notice they hid that three in words instead of numbers. And two and three-fifths pounds of oranges. So we have some decimals and we have some fractions. And we have this little whole number three that they tried to hide. And so we are going to use all that information to fill in these blanks. So it says Beverly played blank for her apples. So we're going to start with our apple information here. All right. So we know per is a multiplying word. So I know I'm gonna take the price of apples and I'm gonna multiply by the pounds. Well, how many pounds of apples? Three pounds of apples. So I'm literally gonna come up here and say times three. So I'm gonna say $1.88 times three. Eight times three is 24. Eight times three is 24 plus two is 26. Three times one is three plus two is five. And don't forget that we have to put our decimal back in our answer. So we look at the number of places behind the decimal. There are two. So we say there will be two places behind the decimal in my answer. So she paid $5.64 for her apples, for her apples. All right, the next part of our fill in the blank says, and blank for her oranges. So again, I am going to come up here and I'm gonna find my oranges information, okay? And so I can see, oh, oranges were $1.25, again, per, so per is our multiplying word, and again, pound, so how many pounds of oranges? Two and three fifths. So hopefully by now you know that we can't multiply a decimal by a fraction. And so you guys have been doing a great job of turning those mixed fractions like two and three fifths into decimals. So we're gonna turn this into a decimal. So I'm gonna come over here and say, okay, two and three fifths. What does that equal? Well, I know it's gonna be a whole two. And then I would cowboy and horse my three fifths. So I'm gonna come down here where there's more space. Three is my cowboy label it just to, to be sure. Yep, three is my cowboy. And I'm gonna divide, big bold decimal. Five doesn't go into three. Remember, we're actually starting with this two right here, so we know there wouldn't be a number here. And then how many times does five go into 30? Well, that would be six times. And so how many pounds of oranges? She bought 2.6. Is that what I fill in my blank with? No, because it doesn't ask how many pounds of oranges, it asks how much she paid for her oranges. So remember, we have to use the dollars up here and multiply. So we're gonna multiply by that 2.6 pounds, so 1.25 times 2.6 pounds. So I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom and say 1.25 times 2.6. So 6 times 5 is 30, 6 times 2 is 12, plus 3 is 15, 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So I'm all done with my 6 and my carries, and I dropped my happy little smiley turtle egg, and I took out the trash, made mama happy. All right, and then second row, five, 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and 2 times 1 is 2. So I add my two rows together. 0 and 0 make 0. 5 plus 0 is 5. 7 plus 5 is 12. And 1 plus 2 is 3. And again, I need to count my decimal places. 1, 2, 3. 
one, two, three, put my decimal there. So how much did she pay for her oranges? Well, she paid $3.25. And then it says, what was the total? Okay, so total just means we're gonna add apples and oranges together. So I'm gonna take the cost of apples, which was $5.64, and the cost of oranges, which was $3.25, and I stack my decimals, make sure they line them up, and I add them together to find my total cost. Five plus four is nine, six plus two is eight, bring down my decimal, five plus three is eight. So it cost $8.89. All right, and then it says the amount of change she received. Okay, so we know change means that we're gonna pay her some money. Okay, so after paying for her fruit with a $20 bill. So she handed that cashier $20 and they took away the cost of $8.89, the total cost, and we're looking for our change. So remember, we have to borrow. So I'm gonna come all the way over to the two, make it a one, and then I'm just gonna drop off nines until I get back to my 10. Okay, so 10 minus nine is one, nine minus eight is one, bring down my decimal, Nine minus eight is one, and one minus zero is one. So she received $11.11 .11 in change, okay? And that is lots and lots of decimal rules. So we multiplied decimals, we subtracted decimals, we added decimals. So just make sure you're using all of those strategies when it comes to question number one on your homework, all right? Let's scroll up here and answer question number two. So question number two says at the beginning of a lab experiment, the temperature of a substance is 30 degrees Celsius. So we're starting at 30 degrees and that is a positive 30. Then it says during the experiment, the temperature of the substance decreases, decreases 42 degrees. So we know that that is a negative 42 because of the word decrease. So decrease is a negative word, negative vocabulary. Then it says near the end of the experiment, experiment, the substance raises two degrees. So that's another good vocabulary word and raises two degrees is going to indicate a positive two. So it says, what is the final temperature of the substance? So we're gonna take all of our numbers and we're gonna put them on our positive negative table. And we see 30 was positive, 42 was negative, and two was positive. So first thing I have to do is combine my team here. So I'm gonna put all my positives together. Remember the rule is same signs you add. So if I add 30 plus two, that is 32, and my team negative is still just at 42, okay? So again, I just brought the team negative down because there was no other players. All right, now I'm comparing, now that I've combined my teams, uh, my positive team and my, neg my negative, my positive team's here, my negative team's here. All right, so now I'm comparing who has more players, team negative or team positive. Well, I can see that team negative 42 is larger. So I know my final answer is gonna be negative. So I'm gonna go ahead and write my negative. And then I'm gonna look and I'm gonna say, ooh, different signs subtract. Because we have some team negative and some team positive. So I'm going to subtract them. They are competing. So we have 42 minus 32 equals 10. And remember, I already decided it was gonna be a negative. So what was the final temperature? It would be negative 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, so on these problems, make sure you're checking out that vocabulary. All right, let's try question number three. It says, Rosa had 120 donuts to sell. Each donut is covered with one topping. So the first thing I notice is the 120 donuts and I'm going to label it as my total. It's how many she has, that is her total. 
it says one third of, so I see anytime I see a fraction followed by the word of, I know that's multiply. So I'm gonna say one third times the total of 120. All right, then it says one fifth of the donuts are covered with chocolate chips. Again, anytime it says of after a fraction, we're gonna multiply. So one fifth times, again, the total 120. And then three tenths are covered with coconut. So again, there's no of, but that is exactly what's happening here. So we're gonna say three tenths are out of the 120, right? And remember whole numbers go over one. And the rule for multiplying is simple, top times top, bottom times bottom. All right, I keep reading and I say, oh, the rest are covered with peanuts. So rest tells us to subtract. So what we need to do is take our total and subtract the flavors. Okay, so it says fill in the blanks with the information based on this stuff up here. All right, so Rosa has a total of blank donuts covered with sprinkles. So sprinkles is this first section. So let's discover how many sprinkle donuts she has. So I'm gonna go ahead and solve here. I've got 120 on top, top times top. And I have three times one is three. Well, I know anytime it's improper, meaning my cowboy is larger than my horse, I'm gonna divide. Three, uh, 120 divided by three is gonna be 40. So how many sprinkle donuts do I have? That's gonna be 40. So those are sprinkles. So down here, I'm gonna say a total of 40 donuts with sprinkles. <clears throat> All right, my next blank says blank donuts are covered with chocolate chips. So remember, chocolate chips is this one. So again, I've already set it up for myself as I read. So 120 on top, 120 times one, and five times one on bottom, five. And remember, we can't leave it improper. So 120 divided by five is going to be, let's see, goes in two, 24, okay, 24. So that's 24 chocolate chips. So 24 donuts covered with chocolate chips. All right, and then our last blank, or not our last blank, but our next blank says donuts covered with coconut. So again, coconut is this one, three tenths. So again, I've already set it up for myself as I read. So I'm gonna say, okay, three, times 120 is 360, and 360 divided by 10 is gonna be 36 because I can use my zeros trick. So 36 over one is just 36. So there are 36 donuts covered with coconut. And it says last, how many are covered in peanuts? So we know that, remember peanuts was the rest. So I'm going to take my total of 120 and I'm going to subtract my 40 sprinkled. I'm going to subtract my 24 chocolate chip and I'm going to subtract my 36 coconut. And that's going to leave me with my peanuts. So 120 minus 40. is gonna be 80. 80 minus 24 is gonna be 56. 56 minus 36 is gonna leave me with 20. So there are 20 peanut covered donuts. I've never had a peanut covered donut. Interesting, 20. And that's how we use our fractions to find the pieces of the total. So remember, top times top, bottom times bottom, anytime you're multiplying fractions um, easily. Okay, top times top, bottom times bottom. Total goes over one because it's a whole number. All right, our very last question says, what is the solution to this equation? Graph the solution on the number line. 
All right, so we have an equation. We're gonna draw a line down our equal sign, and we're gonna say, what is happening to x? So I'm gonna come down here and say, I know I need my do undo chart, okay? So I know that I might need my positive negative table here. I might need integer man here. All right, so what are they doing to x? Well, they are adding six. So I'm going to put plus six. So what is the opposite of addition? Well, that would be minus six. So that's our first job is subtracting six. All right, our second thing they're doing is they are multiplying, right? When a number and a letter sit next to each other, it's multiplying and they're multiplying by negative five. So the second step will be they are multiplying by negative five. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. And again, that negative five stays negative five. All right, so grab my blue here and I'm gonna start with subtracting six. And remember when you subtract six, you do it on both sides. So minus six, minus six, all that's left here is negative five X. 31 minus six is 25. All right, I check off this step. I'm gonna check it off with orange. Okay, because I did my minus six on both sides. All right, so now I'm gonna go and I'm going to divide by negative five. Okay, cross it off. X equals, and I have negative five here. I know because integer man says positive 25, negative five. And I know that 25 divided by five is five. And that is my final answer. Again, I'm double checking myself. Did I do all my steps? Yes, I did. So how would I graph negative five? Well, I would just go find negative five which we know is gonna be right in between negative four and negative six. I'm gonna put a solid dot and that's it. Okay, so it equals negative five, right in between four and six. And that is your refresher. So go answer the other homework questions.